All right, Dragon's Dogma 2, Gameplay Showcase, TGS 2023. Oh my God, you can jump on birds? Bro, I remember that you could do this in Shadow of the Colossus. And yes, it's not realistic, but I don't care because it's just cool. Okay. This, this is awesome. Oh, exploding arrows. Oh, you could just jump and climb on the dude, just like shadow of the Colossus. Oh my God. This is awesome. <sighs> what? Okay. There's mages. Explosions. What the heck? Dragon's Dogma 2. We never played Hello, the first everyone. one. I'm Hideaki Itsuno, the director of Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2 is a narrative driven action RPG set in an immersive fantasy world designed to place player choice at the heart. Okay, so when he says action RPG, I don't think he means like top down like Diablo or or PoE or anything like that. I think it just means what we saw of the gameplay. It's actiony. The action gameplay is designed to challenge your creativity, and although this is a single player adventure, AI controlled companions will accompany you throughout the experience. Oh, okay. Um, what does that remind me of? That reminds me of what was that game? the hell was it called dragons inquisition was it dragons inquisition dragon dragon age inquisition where you had your 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 main character and you could select between your like your main character and your your party and you could set up all their moves and stats and gear but whatever character you chose that's everybody else was the was just AI controlled. So I think that's really cool. Today, I'd like to show you a little of what you can expect from the world of Dragon's Dogma 2 with this new gameplay footage. In Dragon's Dogma 2, up to three AI controlled beings called pawns can join you on your adventures. Oh, nice. Players can choose from four starting vocations that determine how they will play. Oh. Oh, okay. Who, who are we choosing? Who are we choosing? Fighter, sword and shield. All right. Mage. What is this? A Khajiit? A thief. All right. I dig the fur. And archer. Oh, man. I don't know. What would I choose? I kind of want to do like a, a playthrough of all of them already. Uh, what would what my first playthrough though be? Uh, if, if the fighter is only sword and shield... Then, uh, can I have a big ass sword? I would, uh, I would make a big ass sword, bro. Of course, you will be able to change your vocation at any time by visiting vocation guilds. What? For what now, mean? let's look at the fighter vocation. Oh, instead of classes, they're just called vocations. Okay. Wielding a one-handed sword and shield, the fighter excels in melee combat. As a fighter, you can cut down enemies with a sword and protect yourself and your party using your shield. It's like an aggressive as fuck tank. As we keep going, we can see some harpies in the distance. As an archer, you'll be better suited to take down enemies above you. <laughs> Let's see what they nice. can do. Nice. Archer bro just shoots. The archer is oh, a vocation got a that uses a bow and arrow to attack enemies from a distance. Make full use of your arsenal, including exploding oh. or blighting arrows. You can also aim at your enemies oh. like a third-person shooter. The monsters of Dragon's Dogma 2 behave organically in the world around them, and will even react to players by using their wits against you. Oh, look at this dude! Did you see that dude like blowing his horn and shit? Maybe he's calling like backup or some shit. 
Oh, and call for backup. Next, I would like to show you the mage in action. Mages excel at long-range magical attacks, as well as healing and support spells that bolster your party with various enchantments to give allies an advantage in battle. Oh, I, I can already tell. If this is going to be the only magic class, it they're going to have to make it to where there is offensive, defensive, and supportive abilities on this one class. And because of that, that's going to make mage OP. There's going to be like a bunch of like damage AOE stuff, single target stuff, maybe a couple buffing abilities, maybe a res or two, and then healing abilities. Mage is just going to be OP. The more advanced and powerful the magic is, the longer the incantation will take. Oh. So you want to do the big damn? You got to do the big cast. All right, that's a fair trade off. In addition to the pawns you adventure with, you will occasionally act with other inhabitants of the world. What's this? We're trapped. What the fuck? He was just sleeping. Lastly, let's take a look at the thief. As <laughs> He's just slicing the shit out of his ankles. He's like a little chihuahua, dude. He's just there. <laughs> He's a little ankle biter. <laughs> you use daggers to strike at your enemy. Bro, look Relying at all the mobility. And quick attacks. What the fuck? Bro, he did like a Blanca ability where he jumped up, did like five front flips and I don't know. Oh my god, there's so much mobility on this dude. I Oh, just based off of that, I think... It might be Thief. It might be Thief on the first playthrough now. Use Swift Step to quickly move away from enemies after an attack. Oh, what do I always say? The key strategy... Mo more movement, more fun. Easy. For the Thief against massive... Wait, is the Thief the only one that can climb? Oh my god, Thief is OP. ...is to find openings... It's like you... There's like this mounting mechanic that they just stole from... What was it? Monster Hunter... Sunbreak? Was it? I, I know you could like mount monsters in uh, the other Monster Hunter games or some of the other ones. I think you could do it in World. But for Sunbreak, once you mounted them, they, they went into this an like animation to where you had to like hit some directions and some buttons and it you could like smash them into a wall or make them do something else. But while that the monster's stuck in that animation, all your teammates can you know, chisel away at, at his ankles and do more damage. So it might be like that. And cling on to the enemy to deal damage. Fighting head on is always an option, but it's a good idea to utilize the environment around Jesus. you while engaging with enemies. That's massive. Between your chosen vocation, diverse terrains, and the particular monster you're up against. <laughs> Just slicing away at his ankles. <laughs> Every melee class ever. Against, each encounter challenges players and their party to use their creativity to succeed. Oh, what the? <laughs> he just made a bridge. Two nations prosper in the world of Dragon's Dogma 2. Vermund, the human kingdom, and Batal, the land of Beastrin. Beastrin? What, just animals? In Vermund, Animal the people? Arisen who slay the dragon have ruled as kings for generations. This land of lush meadows and rolling hills is ripe oh, for exploration. Oh, that's so cool. With the bird thing. Oh, uh, maybe maybe it's only supposed to be like an elevator type deal. Like, do you know in um like Armor Core Six there are those platforms you stand on and it just launches you up? I think it's kind of like that. Like whenever you jump on a bird, the bird just there's like a set place instead of climbing up uh, the side of the hill like your standard climb animation or whatever. It's just jump on the bird. It is if as long as you see a big ass bird, you could probably go up somewhere. I might be like that, I, but I still think it'd be cooler if there were all those birds just doing their own thing around the map. And as long as you could jump onto one, it'll just take you somewhere. I think that's cool if they did that. In contrast, Batal is a rugged canyon nation with a city built on the site of ancient ruins. It is home to the Bistrin and their unique culture. 
The nation of Batal offers players a different experience from the human kingdom with diverse oh environments God. to explore and monsters to encounter. Oh, they're stuck in a balloon. <laughs> in your adventures, you might come across people who call out to you. Oh, have you some business with the apothecary, sir? Oh, uh, is this... Is this kind of supposed to be symbolic of the infinite side quests in Skyrim? Like people just hail you like, hey, adventurer, come help me. I need your help, please. I have lost a, a necklace heirloom. It's in this random cave. Can you go get it for me? Sure. And it, it's just infinite side quests. <laughs> I hope it's not like that, but I don't know. It was an all right mechanic in Skyrim. D just separate them. Separate the in the quest log or whatever, please. Other times, you might receive quests from people who you aid. I think heavens. Thought I'd never make it. If I might be so bold as to impose upon you again, would you be willing to accompany me to the cemetery and safeguard me from harm? Yep. Pawns with knowledge of a quest may be able to guide you to the right location, but it is up to the player to decide whether to follow them or not. All right. Pawn support you throughout oh. your adventures and make. Bro, he's just hanging on that, and he just let go. I was gonna, I was just gonna be like, is that is that bird about to take him across all this? Nope. You just, it seems like you have like a invisible grip meter, maybe. Come to your aid oh God. when you. Is there fall damage? You are in trouble. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's so cool. Your bro caught you. <laughs> oh man, that's that's actually awesome. To complete your quest, you can ride ox carts to travel to major locations. Okay, they got fast travel. Cool. But be aware, as you might get attacked on oh. route to your destination. Oh, instead of fast travel, it's just a taxi. Like World of Warcraft with the birds. And on the taxi ride, you could get ambushed. So, all right. That's pretty cool. And have to decide how to tackle the situation. Just beat his dick off. During the ride, you can choose to close your eyes to quickly arrive at your destination. Oh, okay. Okay, so it is like essentially fast travel. Time is ever passing, even while riding an ox cart, and the environment around the player constantly changes. Nighttime is especially dangerous. I can barely see. With no light to eliminate your surroundings, you will be enveloped in pitch black darkness where you can't even see your feet. Oh, dang. Also, there are dangerous monsters that only appear at night, so you need to be careful when adventuring in the dark. That's cool. There are night and day cycles, and with each cycle, there's different monsters. I think that's pretty cool. Hopefully there's like some unique monsters that only come out at night, and then maybe they drop some badass shit. If you have a camping kit, you can find a campsite to spend the night and recover your health. Oh, dang. Good evening, Arisen. Tis the honor of my life to share your journey, Arisen. Oh, that's pretty cool. To wrap it's like whenever you go to camp, you can just bullshit with the boys. Like, um, what was it? In Mass Effect? Anytime you went on a mission and then came back, you could just talk with your crewmates about what happened on the mission. And I guess that's going to be like the kind of the same thing with uh, the camp. So I think that's a good idea. Bob, I'd like to introduce some advanced vocations that become available oh, as you per subclasses. Oh my God. What is this? Mystic spear hand. What? This is like spear bro with some magic. Okay. Wait, is this a bunch of varieties of the same class? Then magic archer. Oh my God. That's so fucking cool progress in the story. The Mystic Spear Hand combines magic attacks and weapon-based physical attacks. A good all-rounder, they use their duo spear at close range and magic at long range. They can also use ma oh, magic and melee. Oh, and he got a he got a dash. Oh my god, this game looks so good. Magic to block an enemy's movement or throw multiple items at once. What? What do you mean? Oh my god, he just picked up the corpse and it was just like, bop. Oh my god, that looks so cool. 
Magic Archer is a vocation that further specializes in long-range attacks with Hacks. magical arrows. Aimbot, aimbot, right healing there. And providing support to your allies, they can learn a skill that releases a powerful attack over a wide area in exchange. Oh my God, Virgil! They got Virgil from Devil May Cry in here, bro. For reducing their own maximum HP, and of course, there are other unique vocations you can look forward to. We have a playable version of Dragon's Dogma 2 at the Tokyo Game Show Capcom booth. Depending on the choices they make, each player can experience very different playthroughs. We're very much looking forward to the impressions of those who get a chance to play. Dragon's Dogma 2 is... You damn right that shit better be on Steam. ...being developed for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and Steam. Dang. Please stay tuned for more information. Thank you. Bro, that shit looks so good. Oh, you can get on the... You can just fly on the thing. What the heck is happening? And of course, you gotta have dragons. That's a big dragon. Oh my god. Bro, I am kind of excited for Dragon's Dogma 2. I didn't play the first one because just with the name alone, I didn't really, I wasn't really, like, when did the first one come out? I don't, I don't even know. I, I wasn't really into these types. Like, I wasn't aware of the title and what it did, but watching it now, oh my God, it looks so good. Uh, when does this shit, oh, when does this come out? Oh, whatever. I'll probably go back and look. I'm excited for this. This looks freaking cool, man. This looks like a banger. I'm going to be on the lookout. But yeah, that's pretty much it for for that one. I'll catch you guys later. I'm excited. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. All right. Peace.